Hi, today we're talking about the martingale approach that can be included in any trading strategy to make up for losing trades. We're going to backtest this method using Python and discuss the advantages and the risks that are involved when you decide to use martingale. Imagine we enter a casino with $20 in our pocket and we decide to play the roulette bidding only on colors. So we're going to bid $1 each time on one of two colors, either red or black. So first we bid $1 on the red color and it turns out that it's a losing trade. So now we lost $1 and we are left with $19 in our wallet. Then we decide to go for a second bet. But this time we're going to double our bet because the previous time we had a losing bet. So in this case we're going to bet for $2, same color on the red. And again we lost $2. So now we are left with $17 in our pocket. Then again, we double our bet because we just lost $2. We go for $4 and we are left out with $13 in our wallet and so on. Eventually, at some point, we are going to hit a win at least one time among these series of losing streaks. And when this happens, the sum that we will win covers up for all the previous losses and adds a small winning bit to our sum. So we end up here in this example with $21 in total. So this is a bit more than what we have started with in our initial position. This approach, meaning doubling the bet every time we have a losing trade, is called the martingale approach. At first, this method doesn't look that bad. In fact, it looks very promising. And at some point when I discovered this in my early trading days, I thought it's going to bring rich income instantly. But this is one face of the truth and I was keen to know better about this method and the risks that it brings into our trading strategy. So to test this method, we're going to use the following algorithm. First, we're going to use a Monte Carlo approach. This is only a fancy name used in mathematics to describe any approach that uses random numbers. So we're going to generate random signal to decide whether it's going to be a selling or a winning position. Just a purely random signal, not based on any technical indicators nor on any custom predictions. It's simply a pure uniform random signal. Then we will execute our trade according to the generated signal. If it's a buying signal, we're going to execute a buying position and the opposite is true. But the size of the trade is going to depend on the status of the previous trade. So if the previous closed trade was a loss, we will double the size of the current position just to be using the martingale approach as we have described it in the previous slide. Otherwise, if we had a winning position, we will simply use the initial position size as if it was our first trade of the day. So we're going to build this algorithm in Python and backtest our strategy that is relying only on the martingale approach in this case, just to see if this would bring any advantage into our trading system. So remember, our whole strategy is relying mainly on the martingale approach, just because we are using a completely random signal. So we're not trying to predict the market here. We are completely relying on a money management uh, method to see if it's going to save our trading system. Okay, so let's jump into the Jupyter Notebook file and see how it all worked out when we wrote our code. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. We start by importing our data. I'm using the pandas uh, data frames. So the read underscore CSV function to import this data file. It's a comma separated value file. So if you have been following this channel and the previous videos, you know that we have been using almost the same function and the same method to load the data and to clean the data, which volumes are zero because these are days or bars or candlesticks where we don't have any uh, trading volumes and we are not interested in those particularly. So when our data is loaded, cleaned somehow and uh, filtered, then we can reset the index and I usually print the tail to know how many rows in total we have and also probably uh, to investigate parts or slices of the data frame just to check that everything is loaded properly. And now we are going to generate our signal at this stage. So I'm going to use the NumPy module and I'm going to use the random function. This is a function that's going to generate random numbers between zero and one. And for this, we're going to generate one random number between zero and one for each row, for each candlestick. 
And if the number is below 0 0.5, which happens half of the time, then we're going to assign, let's say, a signal which is equal to 1, which is a selling signal in our case. Otherwise, if the random number is above 0 0.5, meaning it's between 0 0.5 and 1, we're going to assign a signal number 2, which stands for a buying signal in this case. So again, these are completely random numbers. We are generating a number between 0 and 1. And if it's below 0 0.5, we're going to sell. If it's above 0 0.5, we're going to buy. This is how we're generating our random signals, giving both buying and selling signals the same opportunity or the same probability to be drafted. So for each candlestick, we're going to generate one random signal. And this is done here in this uh, cell. So this is just to verify that we have been generating enough signals for all the cells and for all the rows in our data frame. At this stage of our code, the data frame would look something like this. We have the opening, the high, the low closing prices, and then we have the volume column. And now we have the signal column that we have just added. And notice we have only two particular values for this column. It's either one for a selling signal or two for a buying signal. So now we can start testing our strategy. I'm defining a new function called signal, which will call the column signal from the data frame. And we are changing simply the um, titles of the columns for our data frame just so it would fit with other functions in our code. At this point, I'm going to import from backtesting the strategy model and I'm going to define the class my strategy inheriting from the class strategy of the uh, backtesting package. So the initial size we're going to go with is 10 at this point and I'm going to define a new variable which is my size it's the size of the position we're going to take for our trade that is initially equal to the initial size at this point but then it's going to change according to the martingale approach so this is where i'm going to start by changing the size of the position that we are going to take whether it's going to be a buying or selling position it doesn't matter at this point, we have to calculate the size first. So if we have a signal that is positive, so if we are at a candlestick that there is a positive signal, no matter what it is, it's a selling signal or a buying signal. And at the same time, the length of the trades is equal to zero. We don't have currently opened trades. All the trades are already closed. These two conditions will ensure that we are in a position where we are open for a new trade because the signal is positive, so we have a signal, and at the same time, we don't have any open trades, so we are going to open a trade at this stage. At the same time, we have to look for the previously closed trades. So if the previously closed trades is positive, so we have already passed previous trades and closed these trades, we're going to check the last of these trades. So this is the array closed underscore trades minus one as an index. So it's the last element of this list of closed trades. And the PL variable stands for profit loss variable. So if this variable is negative, meaning we have a losing trade, if it's positive, meaning that particular trade was a winning trade. So in this case, if it's negative, we are going to apply the martingale approach and we are going to multiply the my size, which is the size of the position I'm going to pass, is equal to self.mySize times 2. No matter what it was, we're going to multiply it by 2. So this is the martingale approach as we have discussed previously in this video. Now, if we don't have all of these conditions, we are not going to apply the martingale approach and in which case we are going to go for... Um, an initial size that is equal to this 10 here. Because remember, if we start with a particular position size and then we multiply it by two, then by four, then by eight and so on, the moment we have a winning trade, we have to go back to the initial size. And this is what's happening here in these two lines. If the length of uh, the previously passed trades is positive, so we have closed some trades in the past, and at the same time, the profit loss variable of the last trade, the last closed trade is positive, meaning we've had a winning trade at last. Then in this case, we're going to reinitialize the my size, the size of the position to the initial size we started with. Okay, so this part here 
will take care of the martingale approach and now if the uh, signal is equal to 2 meaning we have a buying signal and the length of the trades is equal to 0 meaning we don't have a currently opened trade all the trades were closed in this case we're going to define the stop loss and the take profit values with reference to the last closing price the last candle close price we took 500 pips in this example so we're going to put the take profit and a stop loss to an equal distance from the closing price and then i'm going to execute a buying position giving the uh, stop loss and the take profit values and providing also the size of the position same thing if we have a signal equal one we have a selling position and in this case we're going to execute a selling trade also providing the size of the trade okay so let's execute this cell and see if we have any errors so all is fine and then we're moving to the next cell where we're going to run our backtest starting with ten thousand dollars of cash no commissions we're just trying to test the strategy so i'm going to execute this and let's look at the statistics so we have a return of minus 4.8 percent so it's not doing well at the moment and we're going to check yeah the plot of the equity so it was increasing at some point and then it started decreasing suddenly the win rate is not that bad it's 49 percent we expect it to be somewhere around 50 percent because we know that we are taking either a buying or a selling position and anyway the uh, the market will have to go in one of these two directions so it's 50 50 percent to have a win rate we've traded a total of 100 trades and we've had a problem keeping up with the uh, winning equity because here we were going positive up to a certain point and it started dropping down so let's see if we can change the stop loss and take profit values and see what effect would this have on our Martin Gay random strategy okay so what's happened here is that we started with the initial size of 10 which is quite large for this uh, particular sum here and uh, changing the uh, the take profit and the stop loss values to 400 pips instead doesn't solve the situation in fact we have a problem and the problem is coming from the fact that we don't have enough money to trade anymore at some point because if you keep doubling the um, amount of your size when you have a streak of three or four losing trades at some point you don't have enough money to pass this particular trade and this is one of the major problems actually it's the only problem of the martingale approach at some point it's going to cause large drawdowns in your trading equity which might completely close your account so what we can do at this stage we can test this by simply decreasing the initial lot or the initial position of the trade let's take five instead of ten and keep these equal to 500 pips just as we have started at the beginning i'm going to execute this execute the back trade and we still have minus 4.98 minus 5 percent in return let's go for smaller take profit stop loss values let's say 300 we're going to run this and now we're starting to have something positive and for the positive i would like to plot the equity just to show you how it works okay so we started here and every time we have a losing streak like a series of a losing trades notice that we have reached something here around 99 percent as a drawdown then we are doubling our positions we keep doubling our positions and at some point we are winning back what we have already lost in the previous uh, losing trades and our equity will continue to go up notice the slope it's a positive slope it's going up but this is the danger of the martingale approach it does go up but at some point you never know when you're going to have a series of losing trades that are going to block your account or completely make you lose all the money on this account now i'm going to try all of this again on a different time frame because for now we've been working on the daily time frame and we can do something similar for the hourly time frame so i'm loading the data again i'm going to check on the data frame so it's all loaded fine we're generating the signals and now we have much more signals in this case we don't have to do this one i'm going to run the back testing and see what it gives us 
So with these parameters, we're not going to uh, be able to backtest because at some point we are losing all the money, all the cash on our account. So I have to decrease the lot amount. Let's take, let's say one at first. Now we try again and this is the results. We have a return of 0.04%. So it's not much in total, but if we look also at the picture, at the figure of the equity here, we have something very characteristic of the Martingale approach, meaning we have a small drawdowns, but then it's climbing up in total. And at some point we have a very dangerous situation that was saved by the fact that we took a very small starting size and at the end we end up with a profit of 0.043 percent um, so which is not much at this point now remember that we've been testing this approach on a random signal we don't have a real strategy we don't have a real indicator at this point so our signal is completely random and we are only relying on the money management that is um, provided by this martingale approach so you need to know what you are doing it's very dangerous don't use it if you are not aware of the drawbacks of this method so that's all i had to tell you about this one i hope you guys liked it and found the information helpful thank you for following this until our next video trade safe and see you next time